um, cook this beautiful food um, that they offer us today. Um, as Ella earlier said, without the sisters, nothing can look good. A uh, couple of weeks ago, some sisters came here and volunteered, paying uh, people to clean the masjid uh, once every three days or three times a week. So, um, initiated by Sister Gena and other sisters who are helping her, you know, paying um, some people cleaning the masjid um, during the month of Ramadan because we have food every day. You know, we, uh, by the way, we remind you that we host iftar dinner here. Every day the masjid buys food, you know, clothes from the members of the masjid. Anyone who, inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, want to be part of it can write their names there. We have the list. You can see Brother Abdul Salam or Usman or Sister Amina or myself, inshallah, register your name to, inshallah, sponsor a day or days of iftar. So we would like to thank everyone, restaurants and individual, uh, individuals and other people who um, have been, you know, doing so good volunteering to help the masjid host every single day an iftar dinner. This is not something that we just do out of kindness. It's an act of worship. Actually, Rasulullah Sallallahu says, if you um, make, if you give a fasting person their iftar dinner, you give them a date or anything that they use to break their food, to break their fast, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will give you the same exact reward. He Subhanahu wa Taala gives this fasting person who fasted for 16 or more or less hours just by giving them food to break their fast. So it's an act of worship. Alhamdulillah, we um, really appreciate everything that you've been uh, doing and we encourage people also to, inshallah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, involve more and more in the activities of the, of the masjid. As you know, after every day we make salah, Abdul Salam used to remind us about our uh, fun, uh, drive, the Ramadan fun drive. Our goal is $50,000 by the end of the month. Alhamdulillah, as of now, I think we have around um, 7000 and, and plus. So anyone who, inshallah, want to be part of it, you see the, the board is here. And uh, after every Isha, we have a short lesson before we start the Taraweeh. Our, uh, our book, which we use this year um, uh, every single night, except last night because I wasn't here. I was in Virginia. I just arrived from airport, and I found that Sogi messed up the mic. <laughs> so you forgive me because I I don't have a mic. So the book that we have uh, this year that we learned together is the book of Imam Al Akbari, Rahmatullah Ali. It's a Mukhtasar, uh, very summarized book, yet very interesting and very important. We started the um, uh, chapter or the section of Janaba. Today, it, um, the author is going to tell us things one who is in the state of Janaba cannot do. Janaba is um, what is called spiritual um, impurity. Spiritual impurity or the great uh, spiritual impurity. He said it is not permissible for a person, actually, what is the Arabic part first? It is not permissible for a person in the state of Janaba to enter a masjid or to read the Quran or to say 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 the Quran except for an ayah or the like for the purpose of protection because the Prophet وسلم, uh, prohibited a person in the state of Janaba to enter the masjid and to read the, read or recite the Quran, as Ali ibn Abi Talib um, tells us. And the Quran itself tells us, Wala junuban illa abiri sabiri hatata So a person in the state of Janaba can neither enter the masjid uh, or nor the uh, recitation of the of the Quran, except to an eye or something like that for protection. Say one is going to bed and he's in the state of Janaba, he cannot um, take a full bath, he can recite an ayah or, for example, ayatul kursi or hajjah for protection or something like that. 
And then he said, "Wala yajuz liman la yaqdiru 'ala al-ma'i al-barid an ya'tiya zawjatahu hatta yu'idda al-alata illa an yahtalima fala shay'a 'alayhi." It is not permissible for a person who is not able to use cold water to go to his wife until he prepares the tools, meaning he has a means of um, using or of heating the water. If he has a natural ignition, then there is nothing. There's, there's, there, 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 there nothing required. Nothing is required of him, meaning one cannot. Has, have anything with uh, one's wife if they have cold water and they know that after they finish they need a full bath and um, they have no means to hit the water then they are not allowed. Why? Because time of Salah is coming and they will not be able to make Salah. But if one has, you know, nocturnal emission, he was uh, sleeping and he had a wet dream, then in that case he has to use the, the, the water anymore, uh, anyway. So he can go to his wife, even if he doesn't have water, then he can use other means, he can use instead of water to make salah. And those are the means he is about to tell us. That's why after this chapter, he, bring about, he brings about the chapter of tayammum. Tayammum, the person of tayammum. Tayammum is dry ablution with <coughs> pure, pure earth or with, well, with, with, with pure earth. You know, this deen is a deen of easiness. Whenever it's difficult, it becomes easy. It is only difficult when one does not know. It is only difficult when one does not know. But it is not also as easy as we think. Like someone told me earlier that we can break our first five minutes before Maghrib. And he's not alone, believe me. I have met many people who do the same. You know, they say, you know, that's what we used to do. That's what we know. Ah, you just can roll income. But yalla, you know, you don't do the same so nobody has the right to break their fast even one minute before Maghrib. Even one minute, even one second if you know before Maghrib. What we say is when Maghrib time comes, you break your fast and you are given time to prepare for Salah. To prepare for Salah. But Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, then you complete the fasting until the entrance of the night. So until the night has come, you cannot eat. But because Maghrib, the scholars want you, want you to pray Maghrib as soon as it gets in, but now it's the fasting time. You are given a break. So to take care, to fast, to break your fast, then you have minutes of preparation to um, pray Maghrib. And I will give you another tip. Sometimes we just say that Maghrib the fact that so that's an opinion of scholars. But if you look at the hadith, Maghrib goes up to Isha. That is what is more correct, even though the other opinion is more famous. That also is something to yes. Say it again. Mm -hmm. When it is time, you don't have to wait for the other to end. When it's time, you can break your fast, even during the, the, the time of Adhan. Because whenever the break time has arrived, it is very recommended by Rasulullah, <coughs> so I said to break your fast. So he says, لا يزال أمتي بخير ما عجل ما عجل الفقر My Ummah will be in goodness so long they haste in breaking their fast. But when you know it's time, when you know it's the time. So he's asking whether we have to ask for the Mu'addin to finish or we can break as the time comes in. When it's time, you can make your short dua and break. And even after the break, you can continue making your, your, your dua because that is the time when dua is accepted. Rasulullah tells us, Inna lisa'imi inda fitrihi da'watan la turaddu. The fasting person, verily, the fasting person, when he breaks his fast, he has a dua that will never be rejected. That's a time for dua. It's not time for just food. You know, when you take your, you know, your, your, your date, you know, take time to make dua. Because your dua now is to be accepted. Abdullah ibn Amr, when it's time for breaking fast, he used to call all his family, his wives, his um, kids, everyone, to make dua together. 
Because that's the time when Allah wa ta'ala does not reject the ones who dua. That's why when you look at the Quran, when Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala tells us about Ramadan, in the midst of the ayat of Ramadan, Allah pauses and brings about what? The ayah of dua. And then after that, he continues the rulings in Ramadan to show us that Ramadan is a month of, of dua. When Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, Shahru Ramadan al-dhi unzil fihi al-Qur'an huda lil-nasi wa bijinati al-huda wa al-Qur'ani faman shahida minkum al-shahra fil yasumu وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى صِبْرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخَرَى يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Then, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي And he um, brings this ayah of, of, of dua to show us